The handrails, fitting the handrails of this stair box staircase are made much, much easier because the manufacturer pre-cuts all of the angled ones. They give you a counterboard hole and the fixing so you can effectively get them in the position where they need to be and screw them through. Bit of glue on the face and screw them right through. And it's fairly straightforward. So I wanna give you a little bit of a tip to how to get them set up. So in our case, we've got a glass balustrade, which simply means that the base rail is slotted. The handrail is also slotted. The handrail slot is twice as big. So you lift the glass up along and slot it back and that keeps it restrained. And then we put in some small sections of timber everywhere, typical fillers, and that also locates it and holds it in place. So that's really straightforward, really simple. But what we did with the straight ones, now this is a bit more sort of complex. If you're gonna do this for yourself, you can actually butt those and fix those as well. But what we actually did was form a very simple template of this handrail. So it's basically how the handrail fits on. We clamped that to the newel. We started using a forcener bit to remove some of the stock because we wanted to then trim it with the router on the face of the newel. What we didn't want to do is remove all that stock with the router because it generates a lot of dust, mess and all the rest of it. So we start with a force in the bit, hold a vacuum cleaner underneath it, bore it in and that gives us, you know, just enough to take off with a template cutter in the router. And then we just did that. So what we then did is we made one, say 15 millimeters deep and we made the other one seven millimeters deep. We then cut the handrail and it's a matter of pushing it in one side like the glass and pulling it back. It means that there's no mechanical fixing needed. It's very straightforward. I made the template with the router. I cut it out with a combination of a small coping saw and freehand routing. And the, um, the effect is good. It also means that, you know, once you've done that little template once, you can just go around going route, 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 and it's all a very straightforward job. So I'm actually at the point now where I'm going to be, let's come around here. I'm actually gonna be forming the understairs cupboard here. So I've made a cutting list out of, um, it's gonna be all out of 18 mm MDF. I'm gonna cut them in solid panels. They're gonna fit in between the newels. It parallels everything up beautifully as well because this newel is still floating about a bit because all of the weight is carried by the landing. We're then gonna pocket screw it in, but we're gonna take them out again. The reason we're gonna take them out is once they're fitted and shot in, we're gonna take them out and we are gonna go and paint them, oil the staircase, put them back in so you don't get the oil on the paint and the paint on the oil and all the rest of it. And then we'll go around with a cork afterwards and that will finish it off. I've also got to put the bottom step and the bottom newel in, but I'm gonna get this little bit of MDF work done first just to save me struggling. So I've got this bit here, that bit there, a little bit around the corner, I've got all my gear set up outside here on the bench. I've got a couple of dust extractors. I've got my rail saw. I've got my MDF. I've got the chop saw here, another vacuum for that. And I'm gonna get through it. I've got my list here of all the pieces I need, all the bits of MDF. So let's get them cut, fixed and done.
So we're at the part of the stair install where we're putting handrails in, we've also got the glass bits going in. We're gonna remove this temporary step. So this was the step that we built originally to enable us to use the staircase safely and not get this curtail, this double curtail tread damage because it would have been a nightmare um, even if you'd covered it up. So what you'd see that we did with everything else was cover it up with this skim ply and um, yeah, I could take this one out of the way. Basically just cut the ply and then we use a really good quality tape. I think this was a Gorilla tape and that's a really good quality tape which holds everything together. So then what we've done is we removed this bottom tread, the temporary box that we made. That's finished with now. We'll get that out of the way. And then we've got our curtail tread. Now what I've done is the finished floor has come all the way around underneath. The newel comes all the way down and is supported onto the hard floor below. So this is a floating Candine floor. So this will be absolutely fine for our tread to slide over the top, be glued back to the staircase, all the loads coming through this newel onto that. So the floor can still move underneath, which is really nice. So I've got this ready. I had to do a little bit of shooting in. This was the existing floor. So it's a little bit out of level. We've got the newel post ready here. So it's a matter of gluing everything in. Now this is one of those jobs where you've got to be committed. You really got to be committed. So I've got my glue, I've got my brush and we are going to get ready. Let's not put that on there just in case it goes all over that. So we want to get our newel post. So I've had the newel post in dry. When I say dry, I've tried it in and we have that ready there as well. But the first thing we do before we put the new post in is we're gonna get some glue all around these mortises and we're gonna slide in the curtail and then we're gonna put the newel over the top because it's pretty tricky to get that in otherwise. So here goes. We'll get some glue on all these elements here. And we want to make sure we get it well coated up for everything that's going to touch, obviously, in here. There we go. Now we can afford to put a tiny bit underneath this riser because it's only going to push back. It's not going to come forward and stain any of the tread. A little bit under there. Let's get a little bit under here. Use, using a brush is quite handy because the bottle doesn't like being upside down. Then we'll do something in this mortise here where we're going to have the wedges. Using this tight bond which has got a longer curing time, it's going to be a lot better because there's a lot of surface areas here that need to go together and if you're not careful you can get in trouble because the glue already is going off at that end, it's getting dry as a bone, everything's gonna start binding. So what we need to do is carefully slide this in to its housings. As I say, I've shot it in. So you can see it's all coming up now. We need a rubber mallet that would enable me to just tap it up. I've had it in once. And the best thing is, you know, you try cutting a finished floor around this. I mean, my floor layers are pretty good and, you know, we're pretty good at cutting shapes, but, this is the best way, straight underneath. You can't go wrong, in my opinion. I've also got a mark on the floor here where I take my riser back to. Let's get this in here. Coming up there. So we're now about ready for the newel. So it's best to put the glue in the mortise 
instead of on the tenon. So when you're pushing it up, it doesn't all squirge out at the end. It's going to push into the hole, if you like. So get the sides done. This was quite a tight fit. And I have got a blind or a bare face tenon on one side, which means that there's no shoulder. So I don't really want to put anything on there. But on this side, the inside, I have got a small shoulder. So we'll get a bit on there. And we need a bit more. Used a whole bottle of glue on this staircase, which is quite impressive. There we go. It's so much nicer using a brush. Damp rag as well. And then we want to ease the newel on. And in conjunction with that, we've got a wedge to go in behind it. So we want to get the wedge in and tapped up somewhere near it. So that will secure everything before I start malleting that back. So the wedge is going to pull the tread up to the riser on the bull nose tread. And we're just going to give that a little tap in. It's all a bit uncomfortable here now because we've got our panels in, which we're incidentally going to be taking out for painting and then we'll put them in while we're on the subject. So this is one of our panels and you can see that this is the face side, this is the outside. And on the inside, we've pocket holed it and we've also got some grounds in to fix it or back fix it, which means to say we can finish these all off, take them out, paint them, oil the stairs and put them back. So obviously we've shot in the tread to the floor. I also had to shoot this riser in here because it was actually hanging out a little bit of the mortise but it's pretty normal for assembly of a joinery product which is made in a factory when you get out on site you have to do a little tiny bit of shooting in here and there so i've just got to take the newel back onto its tenon a little again a little tap until we're all happy So that's the newel onto the tenon. Now I'm going to just tap the back of the tread into the newel. That's it, that's in. Perfect. Yeah. So if I screw the back of that riser now. Yeah. Yeah. So the newel's in, the double curtail tread's in, everything's glued. All we have to do now is just do some final checks, make sure that the newel is sitting nice and plumb. Now it's relying on the string being in the right place. It's relying on the shoulder being nice and tight as well, but you can manipulate them a little bit, but I'm really happy with that. So we're gonna let that cure there. I'm gonna be putting a couple of screws through the back of the riser into the newel post from the back at this position. That will hold that tight. It will also hold it plumb in this direction until it's all gone off. Let's talk a little bit about the handrails. So you can see that I've actually got some handrails in. So these are already pre-cut, they're square cut. They don't have a tenon on the end. Quite often you may have a tenon, but then they need to be installed as you put in your newel posts. Sometimes you can get a tenon that goes like this, so you can actually get them in afterwards. Now, stair box actually give you a cut handrail and a cut base rail. What I like to do is to set them up is to put in the base rail into its position. So we'll put this base rail into its position. It needs to be unwrapped, but for, um, for the sake of what we're doing, we drop in our base rail, okay? That's pre-cut too. Then I've got two timbers, which have been made exactly to the height. So that will drop in there. We'll pop a clamp on there. And we'll do the same at the top. And all this is gonna do is pro provide me with a pair of hands. And we know that because this is exactly the same size, these rods are exactly the same size, when we put our handrail in, it's gonna be parallel from the string. And that's important because we wanna make sure when we put our glass in that it all fits. So the principle is we drop in the handrail it sits on our marks, okay? We get it central, spot of glue on the back, a screw, and that pulls it all up. Now you might think that a tenon would be stronger. However, because of the nature of this, it rakes and it's got a nice flat cut there. Once it's fixed, it's incredibly hard 
to turn. So while we're talking about that, the straight handrails, there's a number of ways of doing these. These can be butted and end fixed, but what we do is we've made a small template here, which is the relief of the handrail. So all I did was cut a hole with the handrail there. Nothing elaborate. Then I took a small router with a 10 plate cutter. This was then clamped to the newel and we relieved it. So basically using a force now, just take out some of the stock. These are veneered, they're engineered, these oak posts. So you'll be super careful. Now, our force is fairly sharp, but as soon as it wants to start cutting in, it wants to take some of that veneer and pull it up the grain. It's just the way the forces are working. So you just want to be a little bit mindful. Now, the reason I'm using the force now to remove most of the stock is it creates a lot less dust than a router spinning at many thousand RPM. So this will take it out and it gives the router less work to do. So we've only got a very short template cutter in at the moment and we can get slightly longer ones, but the name of the game with the router, especially when you do something like this, which is a finished job, is just to try to make sure, you know, you don't overdo it and you spin off and, and, and come out. So that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna do this side, this side, and the one over here, and then we're ready for some handrail. which enables us then to measure from the newel into the mortise and actually get the handrail fitted by pushing it all in one way. Here we go. And slotting it in. It's quite a tricky job because it's a nice tight fit. And then what we need to do then is pull it back. And that's a super, super solid job, nice and safe. Bit of glue in there as well. And for safety's sake, you can even put a tiny skew screw up through the channel where the glass goes. This is a piece of glass I've got in. I'm gonna get one of my glass suckers. So this is how the glass works as well. It's really simple. It lifts out and it lifts in. We've also got then a filler, which actually blocks the ends in a little bit like a stair spindle. So the glass lifts up into the groove. The groove at the top is double the height and then it drops in here. So it's super, super easy. So that's basically it. So that's the finish, the curtail, the ball nose, the last bit of handrail, the newel, the panels that we've cut in with the pocket hole fixing here. We're gonna take those out now. They're gonna go for painting that enables the stairs to be oiled, then they can be put back in once they're painted. The skirting's already fixed to them, as you can see. And that pretty much wraps up the staircase, apart from the final bit, which would be oiling and putting in the glass.